Hey, I'm Zanzi. Welcome to Farmers Inside Track, episode 151. I'm your host, Tornumdu. Watermelon farming is profitable. Succeeding, however, means getting the basics right and understanding the best techniques that works for your farming operation. In this edition, Food Film Zanzi journalist Nicole Ludolf chats to watermelon farmer Peshelachai Mojabello, who shares the basics to get started, tips to deal with pests, and his experience growing this crop. Over to you, Nicole. Thank you so much, Dawn. Leshlachai, can you tell us a bit about the life cycle of the watermelon plant? The life cycle of watermelon is between 12 to 18 weeks. But then currently, there's a trend for farmers to go for this seedless watermelon because they say it ripens very quickly. But then otherwise, for us, we got a good response for the normal watermelon, which took three months to ripen immediately or even a week before harvesting or a week before it can be three months, we started harvesting and selling those watermelon. What kind of infrastructure is involved in watermelon farming? Last year, we've managed to cultivate an area of about three hectares. Within that three hectares, we've managed to plant watermelon, bambara granuts, butternuts, Each crop occupied a hectare each. All the plants responded very well. And then uh, though we approach uh, formal markets, but then after the response that we got in street markets, we decided not to go for the formal markets. All the product was sold through street markets. Watermelon was sold at uh, 50 rand each. A bag of 10 kg butternut was 60 rand each. And a bag of 5 kg Bambara ground nut went for six rand each. What about the water needs of the watermelon plant? Watermelon doesn't require too much water. Most of us depend on the rain. What we do is we plan our plant season depending on the water, the rainfall pattern. Like we look for the previous year pattern and then we look for the current year, even the following year. That's where we plan our planting. What I did on my farm is that I knew that in my area, we experienced too much rain in November, early December, and then it start, we start to experience little rain towards end of December and January. And end of January, we can receive rain once in January or twice. So what I did was I knew that normally your watermelon needs too much water for germination to germinate a image and then after emergence it doesn't require too much water so i knew that uh, in december we doesn't receive too much water but then in january we would have received too much water hence i've planted in the first week of december when my plants started to imaging because the image between 7 to 14 days after planting we were receiving medium rainfall and then when the plant started fruiting it, uh, in January, that's where we receive local rain. Even in commercial farmers, what they do is that before germination, they apply 35 to 45 millimeters of water every day to the plants. Then after emergence, they can irrigate once or twice or thrice a, a week. Then when they start, the plants start to fruit in, they can even irrigate once a week. So the plant doesn't require too much water. Is there anything farmers have to do to their soil before they plant watermelon? What they need to do is just to to cultivate the soil so that the soil can loosen up. And then after the soil has loosened up, that's where you know that the soil will manage to harvest too much water because you will have loosened the soil. The pores will be open and then the soil will harvest too much water. You just have to loosen up the soil, then you are done tips around fertilization of the plant. Normally, I advise people or farmers that the best way to go in farming when you are studying is to do your soil analysis. After doing soil analysis, the results when they come, they will tell you what the kind of soil we are dealing with, the nutrient content of the soil, and then that's where you will know the kind of soil fertilizer to apply and the, the amount because the analysis come with the recommendations. But then mostly upcoming farmers, what we do because we don't afford to buy chemical fertilizers, 
we apply our curl manures or our organic manures because also they loosen up the soil, they add nutrients to the soil, then that's it. What are the most common diseases and pests the plant is affected by? The common ones are your aphids, nematodes, squash bugs, stripped and uh, spotted cucumber bagels, those small bagels that you see around the fruits. And then your diseases, your mildews and your fossarium wilts. Your mildews are normally are as a result of too much water and little sunlight, though the plant doesn't require too much water. Your wilts is a result of lack of certain nutrients and sometimes it's lack of water. I always tell farmers to do their crop rotations because in doing crop rotations, you know that some diseases or pests thrive well in certain crops and then they don't thrive well in other crops. So when you do your crop rotations, you limit those things. Any final tips on growing watermelon? For imaging farmers, it's easy to go into watermelon farming because you use the simple implements to do that. You don't need to have your irrigation system. Only if you can plan your planting on the rainfall pattern, from there your products will market themselves. The nice products market themselves. I always tell people that nice products or quality products market themselves. It's, it's quality rather than quantity that gives your products market. Thanks, Nicole. And it's absolutely amazing having you here again on Farmers Inside Track. Watermelon farmer, Neshela Chai Mojapelo. From me, Don Numdu, Nicole Ludolf, and our producer, Megan van der Vent, and the rest of the Food from Zanzi team, have a great week. Bye for now. Life in South Africa can be a lot. I mean, scroll through Twitter for a minute and tell me I'm wrong. Thank God for South Africans though, right? We're inspiring, and even on the bad days, we fight back with a smile. That's why I love Food Form Zanzi so much. They're not ashamed to celebrate the ordinary unsung heroes who work every day to put food on our nation's tables. Go to foodformzanzi.co.za and never miss an inspiring story.